Hi everyone. So today we're going to solve a basic uh, statically indeterminate problem. Uh, but before we begin, let's consider what a statically indeterminate problem really is. It's, it's one which involves more reaction forces than the number of useful equilibrium equations that we can use to solve the problem. So in short, we don't have enough information to solve for all the number of unknowns of the problem. In order to do so, we have to somehow find equations of compatibility which are given by uh, the boundary conditions or the extra constraints on the problem itself, um, which has information that we can use. Uh, I, I guess we'll see through this example. So let's, let's begin. So uh, let's consider a wall. This is my wall, which has three springs. Uh, these aren't very good springs, but oh well. Attached to it, attached to the three springs, it is a weight, which has a weight, let's call it W. Uh, the outer springs have spring coefficients of K1, and the middle one has a spring coefficient of K2. Um, so this this is our problem. Our, our, what we have to do here is solve for all of the reaction forces uh, on the wall. So let's begin by labeling those. Let's just call the first one RA, so reaction force A. Uh, the second one RB. And the third one RC. Okay, now just by looking at the question right now, we can kind of intuitively tell that RA and RC should be equal just, just by symmetry alone since the spring coefficients on the outside are equal. However, we're able to show that with uh, our equations of equilibrium, uh, which I'll do just to make it clear. Um, so let's, let's begin with that. So let's do this. First step, equilibrium equations. Okay. So the first one I'm going to write is the force balance in the y direction. And so that has to sum to zero because it's in the equilibrium. Uh, so this means that we have Ra plus Rb plus Rc minus w. Oh, and just so you know, I, I just arbitrarily chose the directions of the reactions to oppose the weight which is pulling the strings down. Okay, so, but you, you can arbitrarily choose any direction you want and whatever your answer is will, will influence what the actual direction is. So let's say I, I have it positive here. If Ra turns out to be negative, then I'll just flip it. Okay, and vice versa. Okay, this is our first equation. But for simplicity, as we'll soon see, I'm going to rewrite it so that we have RC minus W um, is equal to minus RA minus RB. Okay, and let's call that equation one. Okay, so for our next one, I already, I might, I might have mentioned this already, but in the x direction. Uh, an equilibrium of forces in the x direction doesn't really tell us anything because there's nothing happening in that direction so it's so it doesn't provide us with any information so let's skip that and go to a moment balance let's say pick this point and I'll call this point point, point A and for completion I'll call this point B and this one point C so the sum of moments at point A is equal to zero so we have that um, by the right hand rule we have a positive moment due to reaction B uh, equal to uh, this distance, which I guess I'll, I, sh I should have mentioned that. This is this has a distance of L and this one has a distance of L. Okay. So we have a positive moment L times RB from the right hand rule. We have a negative one equal to L times W by the right hand rule again. So that's minus L, W, and we have one due to RC equal to positive 2L, RC. 
So that's plus 2L RC, which equals to 0. And from here, we can just cancel the L's to simplify it a bit. And we have RB minus W plus RC plus RC equals to 0. And I wrote this because we'll note here that these two terms are exactly the left-hand side of uh, the equation labeled 1. So from here, we can make that substitution and start solving for uh, or simplifying this equation. So by using equation 1, we have that RB, uh, substituting that in, minus RA, minus RB, plus RC, equals to 0. These RBs cancel. And so we're left with RA is equal to RC, which is exactly what our intuition told us, that these forces on the edges are equal due to the symmetry of the problem. OK, so we have the equilibrium down. Um, so that's really useful. But clearly, we don't have enough information from these two equations alone uh, to solve for these reactions in terms of the known parameters that we have, which are k1, k2, and w. So that, that's that's our end goal here. So uh, in order to solve statically indeterminate problems, the second step is to uh, introduce something called um, force displacement. And you might initially think, well, why are we introducing more unknowns? But as we'll see, we can combine these force displacements with the equation of compatibility to give us one more equation which provides more that bit of information that we need to solve the problem. Because right now we have two useful equations, two equilibrium equations, but three unknowns. So we still need one more equation to give us um, a solution. Okay, So for step number two, we determine the force displacements. OK, so let's say arbitrarily, let's say we didn't have this weight here, but we had forces applied to each of these springs. Okay, um, the, the amount of distance that the first spring uh, displaces is equal to this. Uh, let's call this displacement 1, delta 1, is equal to, uh, what is it? negative f1 well, let, let's call this let's call this delta a is equal to negative f a over uh, k a and this is just from Hooke's law so we know that uh, the force is restorative for a spring and it's equal to and proportional to the displacement by some constant Okay, so if I just rearrange this, you have Hooke's law for spring. Um, so here we know that FA, FA is simply um, RA, okay, because that's the force that's acting on on the first spring, and KA is just K1. So this is equal to negative RA over K1, okay. And so similarly, for the second spring, the displacement is Fb over Kb. And this is equal to negative um, Rb over K2. And the final one, Fc over Kc, which equals to negative Rc over K1. And we know already from, from the equilibrium equations that these two um, are the same, RA and RC. So we can just rewrite this one as uh, minus RA over K1 for now. And then we'll solve for a, R1 uh, just by getting rid of RC for now by this equation. And then we can simplify the problem and solve for the first unknown. 
so now we, we've introduced this parameter, this, this new unknown, these displacements, and clearly that only that only really that's only detrimental to our, our solution. We don't have enough information still to solve this. Uh, so here's where the equation of compatibility comes into play. Bef but before we do that, let's let's label all of these as just simply uh, equations to Okay, so step three, um, compatibility. This is the only part where you really have to look at the look at the problem and try to determine what happens with these displacements. So th this compatibility equation that we have to determine uh, somehow links these displacements together to give us the third equation that we need to solve for um, our knowns. So by looking at this equation, by the symmetry, we can tell that let's say this uh, initially these springs are are they're, they're not stretched, they're at rest, okay. And now we attach this weight to it, and if we pull it, if this weight pulls the spring down, since it's balanced and it's 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 in equilibrium and has uh, a level of symmetry about it, we can tell that whatever happens, these three springs will displace an equal amount, okay? And that's mostly due to the symmetry of the problem. And because this weight is, is positioned in such a way with respect to these three springs with that are separated by an equal distance apart, that that will happen. So from here, the compatibility equation turns out to just to simply be uh, delta A is equal to delta B G equals to delta C. And this would be equation 3. Okay. So now we can uh, solve for our unknowns now by using equation 2 in conjunction with equation 3. So let's do that right now. So equation 2 and 3 gives, uh, let's see, well we can just use these two since delta A and delta C are the same as we showed here. Okay. So delta A is given by negative RA over K1 equals to negative RB over K2. The negatives cancel and we arrange it a bit. Uh, let, let's let's make it so that we have hmm let's see here. How should we get it? Well it doesn't really matter I guess. Now let's write it as RB is equal to K2 over K1, just bringing the K2 on the other side, uh, times RA. Okay? So that's, it gives us another useful equation that we can use. Now, using this equation, we can now I believe we have enough information to solve for everything. So let's go back to um, equation one here. So let's let's write that let's write that somewhere where it can fit on the screen. Uh, let's just move this. Nope, that won't work. Okay, so I have some limited space here. So let's just write in the bottom for now, uh, just so I remember uh, equation one. We have. Uh, actually, no, just right here. Okay. So equation one gives us um, RC minus W is equal to minus RA minus RB. But we know that uh, previously what we found was that RA is our, or I'm sorry, RC is RA, so we can replace RC by RA, and we have RB in terms of RA already from what we, we just solved. So we can use these two box equations, combine them into equation one, and solve for uh, RA in terms of this weight that we know. Um, so we have RA minus W 
is equal to minus R A minus K two over K one R A. So let's see here. So then what we can do is factor this equation. Uh, so we have two R A two I'm sorry, two R A plus K two over K one uh, R A. Just bringing these two to the other side and bringing the W to the other side. Take it to that, and then combining these and bringing it to the other side, we have R A is equal to let's say two 2k1 plus k2 over k1 flip, so that's k1 w over 2k1 plus k2. And that's ra. And as it turns out, as we showed earlier, um, that's also rc. So uh, let's, let's include that in this circle. Now, um, going back to our second box equation, now we, we can solve for RB as well. So RB is equal to K2 over K1 times this. Okay, So we see that the K2 from the denominator cancels the K1 from the, de the numerator. And we're left with, we're replacing that with the K2 in the numerator. So we simply have K2 W over 2K1 plus Okay, and so there you have it. We solved a statically indeterminate problem um, by utilizing a compatibility equation that we can find by looking at the looking at the problem. And um, overall, th this problem is quite simple because we it's very symmetric, and so we get a lot of information just from intuition. But I mean, of course, we can still prove all those things and show it with with the equations given here. So well, I hope this really helps anybody who has problems with statically indeterminate problems and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.